very nice, very nice. Okay, feel the gap, feel the gap, do it straight. Oh, sport drive mode. <laughs> I was damn, I don't even know jujitsu exists that times like what it is. shit like here and you go for your for your account like my recipes or something like for example I don't know there's nothing here oh let's say go online yeah we're going online what yeah it's like you need to wake up because of the it was on of thermal mix yeah and basically I it's like gonna be mine okay what do you want today for example you just we just doing some shit let's say something basic like some internet some shitty but Let's say spaghetti, yeah, for example. Okay, which one you want? Yeah, like for example, let's pick this bolognese. Start cooking. Yeah, uh, add hundred grams of Parmesan, Parmesan cheese. Yeah. Or and you go next. So look, basically it's like wait here. So you look this. If you put pressure, so you just put hundred grams. And it's a, it's a and measure. Me measure. Oh, you go wow. next, put this top on, next, and now put the uh, knives for 10. So it mix the parmesan, oh, you blend, go next, blend it, it put it. parmesan into the bowl, go next. Uh, it's cooks for you. It's like 35 four steps how to do. And it's fry, it cooks, it's mix, it weight, and everything included. So basically, it, it's also cooks inside, yeah? So we cook it inside. This is from yesterday, yeah? But to now what I do now, I'm not gonna do re special recipes. So what I gonna do, it just, I just put like back. So I don't want a knife now. I just wanna back, uh, back 10 minutes, for example, for cooking. Tempera uh, temperature like, 90 degrees and it's gonna stir 10 minutes and it's cooking for you it's gonna be warm in a few minutes <laughs> it's so like you can make you can make dough dough to i don't even know what turbo is it's like cleaning mix uh, cooking the boiling the eggs no more water like kettle warming up making uh, like for sauces making them more more cream like so. cooking the rice ferment Uh, you can you can uh, peel your potatoes inside. You have special special thing you put it and it peel potatoes. Wow! Start with your name and your gem. Okay, uh, Maxim Witkowski, Legion Ostkam, Belgium. So tell us how you started your martial arts journey. Oh, so it was pretty funny story and starts with the bright times when uh, Mirko Krokop is fighting. So. I was, I don't know, 19 years old, and I just saw some highlight reel from Mirko Krokop Filipovic knocking out people in the prime times in the, uh, with his left high kick. And I was, damn, I want to start this, start MMA fighting. It was, I don't even know Jiu Jitsu exists that times, like what it is. I just know, like, MMA cage fighting, people fighting, uh, try to beat each other with their own that blood and stuff, like Vanderlei Silva stomping the heads in the pride times. And I <clears throat> and I know there is like gym not far, not far from my place when people doing MMA, so I'm gonna try it. But I was like 19, I was so inexperienced with any, anything about martial arts, so I was like, first month I'm gonna train myself, I'm gonna be prepare myself for the training. And me and a couple of my friends was no experience at all just start doing some 
MMA training in my basement. We just bought a boxing bag, hung it, and doing some weird shit like totally white belts, not experienced guys. So yeah. Then after after month, uh, one of my best friend he he was 19. We was straight after school. He decided he gonna leave uh, to England because I'm gonna back to this story later. Uh, and I that times he left to the England. I start. I go to the. I, I don't have any more partners to train in my basement. I said okay, it's time to start in the professional gym. So I go there, and it was uh, jiu jitsu class. I just came in and I from the first first moment we start rolling doing like session because uh, from the first very first class I start rolling I already knew it's the thing I want to do like I it was I don't even know before jiu jitsu exists the moment I started rolling we just start I know some headlocks uh, close guard basic stuff I was like dang I need to be good at it I need to and I fall in love with this sport so much uh, and this is in your this is in your hometown in Poland. Yes, this was uh, this was in Poland. This was a city called Wrocławek. It's like hundred twenty thousand people city, uh, not really big one. It's like centrum of Poland, and yeah. So from that moment, I just keep training, keep training, hook up for jiu-jitsu, trying to do everything. I was still in the in the middle school, so I was doing everything around my life to just make it uh, on the training every day and yeah that's it so that's how i started and then what happened after that how did you continue how did you continue the martial arts mm, so i trained around one and a half year in poland i just got promoted uh, to the blue belt straight after it was uh, uh, I was promoted by my previous coach uh, Mariusz Handler. It was a guy who's a like, black belt in Poland now. We used to train under Shooters MMA, the guys from Sweden. The, his name is like August Wallen. He was like, they have big MMA team, they still exist in training. Uh, so they came from Sweden, give us uh, the belts. And after this, I just train one and a half year and I, I don't have, I finish my school and I I don't see any more perspective in my in my city to do anything. And my friend called me, the friend from the England called me, hey, maybe you want to come to the England? It's like also big uh, Gracie Barra school. Yeah, I, I, I was still fresh, so I heard all oh, Gracie Barra, a really big team. I was like, yeah, probably good school. And so I decided to move to the England. Then I moved to the England, it was Bath, city called Bath, the southwest of England, really close to the Wales border. Uh, so yeah, I moved there and I started training uh, Jiu-Jitsu under Gracie Barra. It was my previous coach, Salvatore Pazze. Uh, he was an Italian guy who was uh, training in, uh, in uh, England. I spent there another three years, something like this. I get promoted to my purple belt. Uh, in England, then I moved by really big coincidence to the Belgium. So I landed here in Belgium. I live here from 2012, if I'm right. Uh, I, I'm not really good at dates, so I cannot really, <laughs> but probably 2012, it was around 2012, let's say. So yeah, and by this time I start training here. First year in Belgium was like mm, a bit tough and difficult for me because I was new here. I don't had uh, much money to 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 things, so I was uh, stopped jujitsu for a while. I really stopped it. I maybe first year I don't train that much. I don't had uh, guys from the gym. I occasionally train in other places when I had time, but it was like not even once a week. I would say so. I totally stopped at purple belt level for a while, but then slowly I bounced back. I start building my time when money comes and that I started working here and then uh, I continue training. It was time when I met uh, my really good friend from here, from uh, Gracie Austin, Antonio. It was first training in Belgium was with him. I just go visit this gym. Uh, till this day, I'm in good contact with them. They they still training there. They, he built a huge team in Austin. So, so I also met another guy. Uh, from MMA gym in Bruges, he was called Gorillas MMA. His coach was a Bart Bertvalvez Geistelen. So I was also training there for a while with these guys. Uh, I hooked up with the team. We had uh, still good relation, but at some point uh, 
this some of the coaches like stop training from this gym and half of these guys start coming to my gym but this was the time i well, i not opened the gym yet so i just training with them and then around i don't know 2015 something like this i decided to open my own gym here in, in belgium it was first uh, under under Gracie Barra because I was still there Gracie Barra student and my previous coach I get promoted to the black belt when I get, traveled to England for my previous coach and I start Gracie Barra here in, uh, in Ostkam he was training a few years under Gracie Barra but our roads uh, totally split so I stopped uh, being under Gracie Barra uh, but thing is before it happens, I was still promoted to my black belt in 2016, I believe. It was the end of the year, yeah. Uh, this I remember really well because it was my time I met my wife uh, one month earlier, so it was like really two big, uh, big events in my life. I met my wife one more later, one month later, I received my black belt. Uh, so yeah, and from 2017, I believe I started uh, running my own club, which is called Legion Ostkam. Uh, so, funny story is, my friend who, he, who invited me to England, travels back after to the, to the Belgium with me. We are still, and he also helped me open Legion Ostkam. Uh, so, we are still friends, he still lives there, and yeah. Ooh, he still train with me. He's purple belt, but he's not trained that much now. But I try to motivate him to be back on the training. So yeah, that's how it happened. And around 2017, I was like training my own. I was black belt, but I don't had any team. I I just train on my own. I teaching the guys, but I was looking for actually looking. I wasn't looking, but at some point, you know, okay, you need to someone better than you to give you also advice as a black belt. You can teach some people, but who gonna teach you? Teaching yourself, it's like not always best best solution. So, and as I said, I had friends in Austin, I had friends in, in Rouge, Gorillas and May team, they will still exist these days. And they somehow met, uh, hook up with, with guys from Ronse. And the Fabrice guy from Ronse, he's also black belt now, he's a, uh, uh, black belt on the Brandon Quick Jiu Jitsu. They hook up with the with the man himself, with the Brandon. So Brandon Quick is like black belt from from USA. Uh, I I don't I, these days I don't know more about him. I know he's good black belt from 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 states like and good guys from Gorillas MMA also hooked up with with the Brandon. It was like and I've been a few times on his seminar and first seminar I had with Brandon. I remember to these days it was truck seminar. And I wasn't so, as a black belt, I wasn't so familiar with the track position itself. So I go to the seminar and this, this techniques he showed, like clicks like pam. I just, he showed me this technique first time and then I started submitting people on the training with the track, with the banana stick, with the twister. It seems, it looks so easy. I was like, okay, this is something I like to do. I have like teacher who show me things and it's straight working for me, like, from the very first first moment that uh, his teaching style the way he passed me the knowledge was something really fits perfectly into my game also so these days we start hooking up more with brandon he start visiting also in belgium more uh, and i became one of his his affiliations team so Till this day, we we still we still uh, in good contact. We we he's still coming to Belgium. Also, uh, Brandon and his partner running the AGF, so it's like big part of of of, uh, of our our work is like helping uh, refereeing on AGF. I was uh, in his tournaments, so I really like it. Yeah, that's how my jiu-jitsu story is. And I think competition is really important, no matter which level you are. I have always two things to say to my guys when they asking me why they should compete. First of all, I read somewhere, I don't even know who said that, but I 100% agree with one sentence, it's like one, one competition is like extra amount of training for your Jiu Jitsu. So if you training and compete, you can do basically 
two years of training in one year if you compete every month it's like totally different level no matter if you're winning or losing on the competition we're not gonna focus on this now i'm gonna tell, talk about this in a second but competition itself put you in the new position try to it's like okay let's be honest if you if you spar on training no matter how hard it is you most of the time you know the other guy you know his moves you know what he's good at you know what he's bad you know his weaknesses sometimes you even can like play a bit because you know okay this guy grab your head but his guillotine sucks like you don't even care you're just laying in this position you don't even try to sometimes run away from something because you know this guy cannot tap his guillotine if you're in competition you don't know the other guy he grab your head is totally different le level of the of the things you need to rock you don't know maybe he's like best guillotine guy ever and he rip your head off in five seconds or maybe he just grab your head and just gonna pull it and hold it like 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 white belt you don't know so you need to rock for every move and this is a bit different than rolling on the on the on the training when you not really reacting for every move because okay you know you can deal with some move without bigger reaction that's the first thing i plus other thing is people asking me yeah but if i am good enough to compete and hell yeah like other guys are also like guy who who just started probably he dubbed him himself or maybe he's new fresh purple belt he goes on the competition he look on the other guys he's looking the cauliflowers and then fuck oh, this guy will kill me but all all these guys things the same so you shouldn't be a scared of confronted with other guy because he probably have on his back the same thoughts as you we we all have the same thoughts. He look like other black belt. He just jumping or warming up, just sprawling, doing some fancy shit on the warm up, and you say, "Oh, I gonna fight this guy? Hell yeah, I'm done." And at the end of the day, you win the fight. And it wasn't that scary, you know. Like not not everything comes on the on the warming up area gets can be translated to the it can be moved to the to the fight. So that's the one thing. Also, other thing is you shouldn't care that much about the winning more important in my opinion is like your own progress even if you lose you can learn a lot from the fight someone someone he'll hook you on the nogi competition okay let's just watch it rewatch it again and just ask yourself why it happened maybe maybe you did some big mistake or maybe maybe you react wrong for the for this stuff I, I, I'm really big fan of, of reviewing everything you do. Try to always ask yourself why it happened. Maybe you should do something wrong. So everything can be fixed and you make, can make it better next year, next day, n next month. Uh, but also one most important thing I was saying is I asking my, my people, hey, who won the black belts division 2021? Do you know? And they probably cannot answer the question. Most of the people won't answer the question because I will tell you why. Nobody cares. It's next competition. You are as good as your last competition. Nobody see back. Of course, 2020 was like some killer guys. They win. Okay, next year someone else winning. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't bother yourself with that question. Or you lose. You you compare yourself with other guys. Just compare yourself with yourself. And try to be better. Once you get better, that mentality leads you to to some to some high level things. You know, if you compare yourself with the other guys, some guys don't have work. They can train like three times a day, and you are like nine nine to five working father with three with three kids. It's hard to compare this 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 type of things. So you just try to fight battles with yourself. Try to make sure you get on the training every day not compared to yourself to the pro guy who, who is like 15 16 years old blue belt and he just training three times a day and parents like bite his foot and make sure he trained three times a day you know like so that's that's the thing just try to be better than you are don't compare yourself with the others how do you like to train your students and structure your classes so mm, that's also a good question uh, I'm a big fan of warming up. Like a lot of times these days, people saying like, "Oh, you can do you can do specific warm up and don't waste your time circling your arms around or do jumping jacks." I am I, I I partially agree with it, but it's really hard if you're working like, for example, most of the students are not pro athletes and they never gonna be because they work. They doing it as a hobby. It's like 
pro athletes probably 10% from all Jiu Jitsu guys. So if they, if they come for the class, they need to be warmed up. Any specific thing like even laying on your back, inverting, it's good, but you cannot do it without like proper neck warm up, for example. So I really like to run a bit like five minutes, circle your shoulder, warm up your knees, ankles, like all the all the joints, and then we go straight to the specific specific jujitsu things. Yeah. So we do like hip escapes, all the shoulder shoulder rolls, stuff like this. So this is especially really important for the for the beginners. I know like if you ask purple belts to, to do shoulder roll, they are like, hell yeah, I've done it a thousand times. Me too, I plug on I doing shoulder rolls for 12 years. You can be always better with everything. Like if it like killer judo guy throw you you land on your back you're gonna feel you feel your both lungs if you land for if you fall back so you should still practice stuff like this of course as 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 better you are you're doing it less you don't see like world champions shoulder rolls over the mat they just go but they they know how they start they starting light they warming up they break the sweat during the specific rolls Try to convince wild belts to break the sweat during the specific role. They will grab each other like and they, they secretly fighting during the drills, you know. So I always like to warm them up a bit. Then uh, I'm a big fan of speed drills. They help you to build reactions. So they are not always uh, specific uh, specific technique related we're doing on this week. But I really like like the neon belly, torando, leg drags tripod hops over the side, uh, some gorilla jumps, all the all the fast, short uh, drills helps you to break the sweat, being faster, react faster, sometimes some turtle, turtle back takes, uh, really, really fast speed drills. Uh, I always try to do like five, six, one minute drills just to, and from there, if I have something on my mind, I sometimes let them drill, uh, drill some longer stuff on the beginning we, we, we doing or we repeat techniques from the previous lessons and we continue with new stuff. For example, sometimes I do like three to four techniques a week and that, that's, I think is still for, for beginners enough to do. I don't need to show them 50 techniques. I know they love to, but if you ask them next week, they remember one thing. So I like to do repeat the techniques and we're doing like three specific for example de la riva sweeps so i try to do them on every training three the same if i see they they keeping up with this good we're moving to to no, another one i don't like to stay behind or teach like okay i show this guys check we're going to the next because it don't make sense for me if i show them three techniques and i see half of the students don't handle it at all what's the point of teaching them next one you know I, I'm like really structured with my class I call techniques like De La Riva sweep first second third and in this order I teach them because in this order you're gonna attack you're not gonna attack De La Riva deep X De La Riva first sweep because you need to set up the De La Riva probably you're gonna try to hold the sleeve grab the pants or then if the movement goes on you're gonna you're gonna maybe hook your hooks deeper so like for example, X week will be number three after his you build the reaction of the first and second. So that's I'm gonna tr uh, try to teach them these these techniques. Personally, I like the most the uh, all type of Kinon Cornelius shit, but it's not for the beginners class. <laughs> so watching you roll, uh, I noticed that you are you seem to really like the omoplata of all the techniques. In all of your roles, I've noticed that you hit the omoplata a lot, and you go for you have many different setups. Uh, is this constantly on your mind? Is this your total favorite technique? To speak to us about the omoplata. Oh yeah, Omo, omoplata. How it happens? Actually, I do, I am I am so good at omoplata. It's like my technique go to if I if I fighting like uh, my level guys and. If sometimes if I like try to roll lazy, I always set it up on lower belt. But uh, how I started, it is, I once time I, I I don't even remember it was in Poland or in already in England. But someone showed me a really good uh, drill. It was like combination of two sleeves and you go for armbar, triangle, moplata. And I drill this a lot. And I somehow I believe this one helps me develop 
like combination of attacking the Moplata sweeps uh, and at, uh, Moplata submissions. So how how I set it up? It's like really different setups you can set up on Moplata, but every time your elbow is open, that means Omoplata is there. So I try to even if I if I go in with some guys, I just try to open the elbow and make them pose the elbows on the mat, and it's already you can set up the Omoplata. Even if they roll over, you can still you can still go on the top and get the top on the plata or just try to sit over the chest and try to do mono plata. That's the another technique I really like when they when they move. Next things from a plata I, I love to do is triangle because it's strictly connected like I said armbar triangle on plata is like techniques they they were cooperating together. Like arm across you get you get you get your you get your triangle. If the guy opened the elbow it's like on plata. All arm are always there. So a few setups I, I do from there, uh, it's like from, uh, I really love the Guber guard also, Lapel, Lapel, Guber guard, uh, really easy Omoplata, Omoplata setup, really easy. So, and I don't even hold the guys down, I let them roll so I always land on the top and then I can continue with the armbar triangle, Omoplata, Monoplata, Monoplata attacks. So that's how it goes. I don't have specific favorite setup, but I, I would say uh, uh, Guber Guard is one of my favorite. So what's next for you in life? Hmm, what's next for me in life? If uh, I definitely want to keep continuing with Jiu Jitsu and you can believe me guys or not, but I am still as hungry as I've been as a white belt or even more. Like my, in perfect life, I would love to train like full time like even now I'm 33 at this moment, I'm still thinking to totally drop all the things takes my time away from me. I, I'm talking about this, the, this, the, the things like like a work and start doing jujitsu full time. I would say now I'm doing like like part time, like 50% of the time is my jujitsu time. I'm still running the club. I giving private lessons. I tra train myself, but I also working full time, so it's really difficult. I working probably plus plus 60 hours a week, and 40 hours are my normal work. So if I could work from work, leave from jujitsu, and have more time for training myself, and also more time to run my club, it would be perfect. But you know, I never know. I'm always thankful for what I got. So I still get with my jujitsu so far. I have good life. I am I'm healthy. I have enough to train. I have enough to live. I have some I have food to eat. So what you can ask from life more, you know, like I'm really thankful, but if it's possible for me to train full time, I will be really, really happy. And then I have more more time to compete because this is what I also missing a lot not because I feeling I need to do good but sometimes if you train teach run run work and all that stuff I have feeling I not have enough time to prepare myself and I don't always want to go for competition like okay I know the other guys are really good there's like a lot of good black belts in Europe can still go with me so I don't want to always go for a competition just to show up and and you know like tap. I just want to give good fights, but sometimes you need more time for for prepping. So that's it. I am. I would say I don't have specific plans, but definitely my next goal is to stop working, training full time jiu jitsu. See you on the mats. Take care. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God.